This is the iPhone 3GS. It's the latest iPhone from Apple. It's a bit of a small step forward as opposed to some of the, uh, the more recent models which have been really revolutionary. What the 3GS does is take a number of kind of features and applications that have been on other smartphones for years, but, and this is crucial, it does them better. There are actually two new products here. Um, there's the new hardware, the 3GS itself that I've got in my hand, and there's the operating system that it runs on. That's called version 3. Um, if you're already using an iPhone, you can also upgrade to version 3 of the software. What you'll find that it gives you is um, faster performance. You'll notice that things like web pages will load much more quickly and the applications will start and shut down faster. The iPhone camera has attracted quite a lot of criticism over the years, um, but there's definitely a new and improved version in the 3GS. We'll just launch this up now. This is a, a 3 megapixel camera, um, but it also introduces autofocus. Now, I'm not sure if you can see, we've got our uh, volunteer in the foreground there. This blue square, um, if I tap on the screen, I can bring any area of the shot into focus. And it's not just the focus that the iPhone sorts out, it will also adjust the colour, the brightness and the white balance as well. Now, while we're on the subject of the camera, there's also a video um, capture device on the 3GS now. If we just tap that little icon down there, see if we get this red box here, we can now record some video. And once we finish recording that, if we pop into this screen here, we then have the ability to email, send to YouTube, and another feature that's been missing from the iPhone compared to other smartphones is the ability to use MMS. Uh, and that's much like the way that you would send um, small images um, via, via the same kind of uh, technology that you use for text messages. Uh, you can probably see up here also, uh, we've got what is basically a drag and drop um, version of an editing suite here, so that we can move through the video. We can also trim it from either end if we just wanted to select a small part and then trim that. Another new feature on the 3GS is the built-in compass, which we can just launch like that. Now, as you'll notice, as I turn the phone like that, the bearing of the compass changes. Now, you may not think that that's a particularly useful um, um, gadget, until you realise that it works with the map feature that's built in as well. We just launch Google Maps. Now, the 3GS has worked out roughly where we are, and you can just see that small blue dot in the middle of the screen. If I just tap this icon here, this cone of light appears, and that shows us the way that we're facing. So if you were to walk out of a train station, for example, and you weren't sure which way you were going, this compass will help you out. We think that's a really great little feature. The ability to cut and paste text, whether that's from emails or from web pages and put them into other documents, is really handy. It's something that's not been on the iPhone until now. Just launch a little note there. Um, we've got some sample text. Now, if I just double tap on the screen there, you'll see that you get these two blue circles. And what we can do is we can just stretch those in or out. Once we've selected what we want, we have the option to copy. We then go to another blank part of the document. We'll just get kind of a line there. Double tap again, and you can paste. Nice and simple. One of the things that Apple is making a big song and dance about with the 3GS is the fact that it's faster. There's a new processor in there, and what that means is that you should be able to launch applications much more quickly. So we're going to put that to the test. At the top of the screen here, we have the 3GS with the new operating system software installed. At the bottom of the screen, we have the ordinary 3G running version 2 of the operating software. Now I'm just going to launch this application that we got from the App Store. It's called Zombieville. Uh, and we're going to see which of those launches first. So slightly quicker for the 3GS there. You'll also find that applications are slightly quicker to shut down as well. The last feature that we're going to look at on the 3GS is the voice recognition software. Now, what this enables you to do is to um, select people from your phone book or to launch um, specific playlists or albums or find artists on your iPod just using the power of your voice. Now, there are two ways you can do this. The 3GS will come with a set of headphones that actually has a microphone attached to the wire. 
um, but we're going to use this button here, which you just hold down for a couple of seconds, which I'll do in a moment because the voice recognition software will pick up everything I say and misinterpret it. What we're going to do, just to give you a couple of examples, is we're going to um, launch a, uh, an old favourite band of mine, and then we're going to try and give someone a call on the phone as well. So, let's start the software. Play, artist, The Beatles. Playing songs by The Beatles. So that's actually worked out quite nicely. What we're going to do now is also um, just show you how it can actually identify what song is playing as well. So we'll just launch the software again. What's, what song is playing? Now playing something by the Beatles. Excellent. OK, well, I think we'll uh, just turn that off now. OK, and just to give you a quick example of how that works with the phone, We'll just launch the software again. We're going to give our friend Anthony a call. Dial Anthony. Calling Anthony Mobile. Which again, worked out perfectly. I think we'll leave Anthony in peace. There are some downsides to the iPhone. If you want to use a calendar and you're using a PC, you're really restricted to Windows, Mail or Outlook. If you want to use something like Google Calendar, you're going to need to get some um, third-party synchronization software involved as well. Then there's the price. If you're already an iPhone user and you're on an O2 contract, you can't upgrade to the 3GS until you're within at least six months of the end of that contract. And even then, you're going to have to pay up the remaining value. For new users, a full list of tariffs can be found at the website shown below. So, for ease of use and for sheer usefulness, the iPhone 3GS continues to set the benchmark for smartphones. Whether you can afford it or not is another matter.